So, in uh, this lecture we are going to talk about a bunch of regularization techniques for deep neural networks. You might find some very familiar terms here for example, L2 regularization um, perhaps something else also, but I promise you that we will see a very different interpretation of this from what you have done in your earlier, earlier courses right. So, again as is the trend in this course, I will start with some basic concepts. I will take today's lecture to finish off uh, the basic part which is the bias variance trade off and I will try to make it more informative than what you have done in your earlier courses. And in the rest of the lecture which will happen on Friday, we will build up on these basics and then try to look at these other regularization forms ok. So, let us start. Uh, so, uh, these are the sources which I have looked at. Uh, so, one of them is the chapter 7 uh, from deep learning book, other is this very good lecture by Ali Gotsi on regularization and of course, this paper on dropout ok. So, let us start with uh, bias and variance again some 5 10 minutes would be similar to what you have seen in the ML class, but then I will go on to something different. So, we will begin with a quick overview of bias variance and the trade off between them. So, let us consider the problem of fitting a curve through a given set of points ok. Now, remember I have always been telling you that there is always this true relation between x and y which is f of x right and which we never know. So, we do not know what this is in the movie example, we do not know what this is in the credit card for detection or in the oil mining example. In this particular example, I know it right. So, what I have done is I know that the true relation between x and y is the sinusoidal curve ok, I know this. But instead of giving you every point on this sinusoidal curve, what I have done is I have just sampled some points from it right, I have taken some points and given to you ok. So, from now on we will behave as if we do not know that this is how it came, it is a big secret ok. And we now want to fit a curve to this, that means I want to learn the function f hat of x ok, which of course, will have some parameters and what will my goal be that now let us look at this again. My goal would be if I feed it this point after the model is trained, the output should be as close to this point as possible right. That is our training criteria everyone gets this ok. So, we consider two models, the first model is a simple model. How many parameters does it have? Two parameters right. The other model and this is what happens when I train the simple model. Of course, I will get a line, but do you th see something special about this line? Why did not I get this as a line or this as a line? So, on average it is trying to minimize the distance from all the points. If I have this as the line, then I will have a very high error for these points right. So, it is just something which goes along the average and hence the sum of the squared errors would be minimized right. So, it is important that when you see these figures you should make these connections to the math behind it. Right? So, this is the geometry you have to make connections to the math behind it right and I hope all of you make that connection. Now, I take a complex model which is a degree 25 polynomial ok. So, this is w 1 x uh, x w 2 x square w 3 x cube and so on. It is a degree 25 polynomial that I have used and I again learn the parameters of this using how will you learn the parameters? We have a quiz two days from now. Gradient descent what else do you know? As if you know any other algorithm of course, you know, but gradient descent right what else will you use? You can use gradient descent for learning these parameters the same idea right you will define a loss you will compute the gradients with respect to all these parameters how many of them are there here 26 and just update those parameters tell a fixed number of iterations or any convergence criteria ok. And this is the curve which I get for the complex model. Uh, note this in both these cases we are making an assumption about how y is related to x right. In this case I made a simple assumption in this case I made a slightly complex assumption, but in both the cases we do not know what the true relation is the true relation is actually the sine curve, but we do not know that we are just making an assumption. So, you remember the 5 things in machine learning you have a data, you make an assumption about how the input is related to the output. So, these are my two assumptions, then I have some parameters you know the number of parameters in these cases, I use a learning algorithm which happens to be gradient descent and then I minimize an objective function which would be squared error loss in this case ok fine. Now, the training data actually consists of 100 points ok, but you do not see 100 points here. So, what I have done is I have sampled some 25 points from here and used that as the training data. So, I have learned my parameters w 1 and w naught or w 25 up to w naught using these 25 points. Now, I repeat this experiment k times what I do is 
every time I will get a different sample of 25 points and I will try to learn the parameters of the model. Will I get the same curve every time? Will I get the same function every time? No, my parameters would change slightly right because my training data is different. So, I am trying to learn it differently to adjust to that training data. So, my uh, function is going to be different. It is the same form, it is either the linear function or the polynomial function, but the parameters, the coefficients are going to be different ok. And I will actually draw these different functions and we will make some observations from that. So, this the black curve that you see is the true sinusoidal curve from which the data has come. The blue line is one of these functions which I have trained from one random sample of the data right. And now I train different functions from different random samples of the data and see what happens I get different lines. This is obvious can you relate to this every time I am basically learning a different value of w1 and w0 is that ok and I have done this 25 times and plotted these lines. Uh, what do you observe with respect to each of these if you compare any line to any other line. So, you compare one of these lines to the remaining 24 lines what do you observe they are very close to each other they are not very different from each other. However, there is a problem they are very far from dash the actual function right that means we are underfitting we have very few parameters in fact only two that is why we are underfitting. Now, let us look at the other case fine uh, this is the function the polynomial the blue curve that you see is the polynomial that I learned from one random sample of the data. Now, I am going to learn this from a different sample of the data. You see what happens? You see that the green curve is actually very different from the blue curve. Uh, you see that here actually this was peaking whereas, this is going down. Similarly, this was peaking, but this is going down and so on right. So, you see that there are clear differences between the two curves. And if I draw the next curve you see it is even more different. The same function learned from different data points is turning out to be very different. Why? because it is overfitting on those 25 points that I have given. The simple model did not even have the capacity to overfit because it is just two parameters how much can I overfit I will just end up drawing the average line right. But here it is really able to overfit and you see that these 25 curves or I do not know how many curves that I will draw all of these are going to be very different from each other you see that ok and everyone agrees that this would happen if you actually try to do this right ok. The complex models trained on different samples of the data are very different from each other. What is happening there is overfitting ok. Now, let me define two concepts from statistics one is bias. Bias is very simple it tells us that this is the true function if you are trying to learn the approximate function and you do it many times then you will get an expected value of the function. So, it tells you how much does this expected value differ from the true function ok you get the definition the definition is straightforward ok. Now, for the simple line uh, the simple model the green line that you see is actually the average of all those 25 lines that you had seen ok. What can you say about the bias very high right because this difference is very high this green line is very different from the red curve which is my true function right predicted and true function. Now, what about the uh, complex model the blue curve that you see is actually the average of all those 25 different curves that I had drawn. So, what is the bias very low does that make sense ok. This means that the simple model has a high bias and the complex model has a low bias is this clear to everyone ok. Now, let us define another quantity which is variance everyone knows what variance is. So, this is one of the functions that I have learned this is the average of that function and the variance tells me the spread. Now, based on the figures that you have seen can you tell me what would happen for the simple model low variance high variance low variance right because all these models were very close to each other there was not much spread in the models. What about the complex model high variance all these models were very far from each other the spread was very high ok. Uh, so, roughly speaking it tells us how much the different f f x f x is that you are learning how different are they from the average f of x right. So, informally I can say the following simple model has a high bias low variance complex model has a low bias high variance and there is always going to be a trade off between the bias and variance. So, why is there always a trade off between the bias and variance people have done the ML course why is there a trade off No, how many of you know the mathematical answer to that you have not done this in the ML course 
no. So, it turns out that both bias and variance contribute to the mean square error and let us see how ok. Mm -hmm.